Hey folks, Frank Romer here with yet another set of hot tips and cool tricks utilizing Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015. I want to start off this particular lesson with what I'm going to call true slow motion. I happen to have two video clips uh, of a lacrosse game that I recently shot and I decided to shoot parts of the game uh, with a newer camera and I had the camera set at 120 frames per second and I knew I wanted to do this because I was going to create a highlight reel of parts of this game. And what I wanted to do was use this next technique of what I'm going to call true slow motion. So some of you might be thinking, oh, I know slow motion. You may not know this particular one. So I've already double clicked on this clip. It's loaded into the source window. And natively, when I brought this into Premiere and I just loaded into the source window and I push play, the clip is going to play back at what I'm going to call normal speed or at least normal frame rate speed that looks like you know, that they're normally, uh, or that they're going at the normal speed. However, if you do this next technique, check it out. I'm going to go back over to the clip. I'm going to control click on the clip, or you can right click on this if you're on a PC. And then I'm going to navigate down to the modify option. And then I'm going to navigate over to the interpret footage option. I'll select that. I'll go into this modify clip window and select the middle tab, which says interpret footage. And then I'm going to click on use frame rate of 2997 and then I'm going to select OK. Right? So when I close this out, this is going to be great. And I push this back to play, this is going to play back at whoa, ultra smooth slow motion. That is unbelievable. I really like that a lot. Now, check this out. I'm going to go back into that same place, control click or right click on this. Go back over to modify, interpret footage. I could have left it there at assume this frame rate. I can simply type it in 30 frames, 60 frames, 10 frames, whatever. The same thing will happen. When I click assume this frame rate, whatever frame rate you originally shot it at, which in my case was 120, I just told it meaning Premiere, I just told Premiere to play that clip back at 30 frames per second. So now I'm going to get that slow motion again, that really nice, smooth slow motion by pushing play. And man, it looks spectacular. I love this. This is perfect for sports. If you want to slow action down or maybe you're doing some kind of a, um, a commercial or something that uh, utilizes water and you want to play that back at slow motion, it's stunningly beautiful. Especially, of course, if you shot the footage at a higher frame rate. That's the trick. I recommend no less than 90 frames per second. I shot mine, of course, at 120 and now I'm playing it back at 30 frames per second. So you'll get the same result, very smooth slow motion with that interpret footage option that I just showed you. So there's there's a few other options in there too that you can tinker with, but that's what I want to show you. And that's what I call true slow motion. Now, let me move on to the next item, storyboard and poster frame. Well, uh, this is actually very handy if you have a lot of clips and you want to navigate quickly through these clips and you need some kind of a reference image to quickly decide what you want to use. So I'm going to go down here to uh, my video clips bin. I'll double click on it. I'm going to make sure that this icon here, the icon view button is selected. Sometimes when you do what I just did, you may be in the list view, which is where I'm at now. So click on the icon view. And then if you go through these poster frames, you'll notice that there's a little um, thumbnail at the beginning. Of course, when you park your playhead on, on any one of these items, you can mouse uh, you could hover your mouse over the clip, which is handy. You can scrub through the clip, but you don't want to have to do that sometimes with all these clips. That takes too long. And where, what I'm trying to get at is it'd be nice to change the poster frame so that you can quickly see or get a quick reference as to what that clip may have. So how about I go to this clip right here and I happen to know that there's a particular poster frame in here that would represent the entire clip. So I'm going to control, actually, before I control click, I'm going to mouse click on this playhead and I'm going to drag it to the spot of where the poster frame is that I want to use, which is not quite at the beginning. Here it is right here. Now I'll control click on that. I'll navigate down or right click on that and I'm going to select set poster frame. And now that is the poster frame for that particular clip. So if I go through these real quick and I set that poster frame, uh, although that might seem like it will take time, it'll take a little time, but really you'll save yourself a lot of time, especially if several editors are going to be working on this project because then they can quickly go through and navigate through and 
look at that first poster frame and decide whether or not that clip will work or may not work based on that quick reference of the poster frame. And don't forget, you can mouse click on these and drag them and move them around like I'm doing now to, to, to do what I'm gonna call a storyboard mode. That's a quick little extra bonus there. You can move these around and organize this quite nicely right here in the icon view within Premiere Pro CC. So let me move on, move on to the next item, which uh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go back to my project. I'm gonna navigate over to my DSLR clips in fact, I'm going to double click on this bin here and it opens up over here. In fact, it was already open. That's the reason why this tab appeared. But basically what I want to show you, and this only works, of course, in the list view mode. But basically, you may have already noticed that there are many columns of information here at the top as I scroll uh, from left to right, you'll see that there's lots of good information here. But believe it or not, there's far more information that you may want to use to help you reference all of your media. So, of course, don't forget, you can always mouse click at the top of one of these columns and move it around. Okay, that you probably already know. Not a big deal. But check this out. Control click at the top of one of these columns. Control click, select metadata display, and you'll get this window, metadata display window, with all these categories. And there are so many categories here, but check this out. I'm going to go up to the first one, which represents uh, Premiere Pro project metadata. I'm going to click on this arrow to the left. And basically, these items that are checked here, these are all the columns that are open over here. So if there was a particular column that you did not want, simply uncheck and then select OK and that column goes away. But that's not what I'm here to show you, although that's part of it. What I want to show you is to turn on certain columns that will help you quickly identify information that I think is important to a video editor. Take a look. If I navigate down, now there's a few here. Uh, the one here at the bottom I like, video codec and video usage. Where is it? There it is, video usage. Those are both great. In fact, down here, if you're a photographer, man, there's so many additional categories for metadata that you can reveal over here if you're working a lot with pictures. So that's extremely helpful. But basically, I just turned on video codec and video usage. Now I'm going to select OK, just like that. And now when I come back over here to these columns, as I scroll over to the right, I'll soon find there's video usage and video codec should be coming up. There it is. And I like to move these. So I'm going to mouse click and drag this over because I like to make uh, video codec my second column. I like video duration as my first. Now, let me show you one other thing here with video usage that I think is very handy. So I'm going to mouse click and drag this over as well. And I'm going to make it my third column or at least the fourth one over to the right. The reason why I like this, take a look at this, is the following. These numbers help when identifying what's being used and how often it's being used. Take a look. If I take this clip, or actually it's a photo, and I drag it down into my sequence and I use it one time, that number changes to two, which helps me understand that it's now in two spots. This item is now in two spots. If I keep using this down in my sequence, let's say I had it down there several times, that number is going to increase. And better yet, not only does it increase to tell me how many times this item is being used, but if I click on this down arrow, it'll tell me what sequence it's in and where it's at via the time code over here to the right. Very, very handy, very useful in identifying how many times something is being used and where it's at in a particular sequence. So absolutely really appreciate that particular feature when I want to reveal additional columns of metadata information. Okay, last but certainly not least, I'm going to mouse click and drag this clip down into my sequence, park my playhead on it. A lot of times it's good to see either the source window or the program window full screen. And I'm going to click on the program window. And if you, I'm going to look down on my keyboard. If you look in the upper left-hand side, there's a little squiggly line. I think it's to the left of the one on most keyboards. That's called the tilde key. If you push the tilde key when one of these windows is active, when you push the tilde key, it'll go full frame. Or it'll go full screen, actually, I should say. Push it again, it goes back down to the normal size. That also works for the source window. Push the tilde key, it goes full screen. Push it again, it goes back. Very handy. Well, that's it for hot tips and cool tricks for this edition. Hope you appreciate that. Look for my next lessons. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn more about editing with Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015, I created an entire series on how to edit video professionally using Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015. It's great. Look for the link. It's usually right at the bottom of this video or near that. You can click on that and check out what I'm talking about. But other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when I've got a whole new set of hot tips and cool tricks for Adobe Premiere Pro CC.